Our next topic is manganese. Now, we're not talking magnesium, the secondary nutrient, we're talking about manganese, the micronutrient, or MN as the elemental symbol. All right, now this may not be one you're even testing for, and I'll start here because Brian and I look at a lot of soil tests on a pretty much daily basis from all over the country and from Canada and other places around the world too. And so many of them don't even have manganese on the test. I don't understand it. I'll see N, P, and K, and maybe I'll see sulfur and zinc or something like that. But why in the world do we not have micronutrients? So as you're pulling soil tests this fall, or if you've already pulled soil tests, maybe you need to go back and pull some more and include the micronutrients. Measure things like manganese on your farm because they are important in terms of yield and other things that are other functions that are going on within the plant. All right, now Darren just told you to soil test for manganese, and I want you to as well. But here's what we've noticed over the years. There is an enormous difference in what test you run and what readings you're going to get. For example, if you run a Malik 3 test, you're probably going to see dramatically higher levels of manganese than if you run a DTPA test. Now, some of it could be true and some of it could be false. Here's what I mean. With the DTPA test, what we believe that is showing is more of what's available for manganese. With the Malik 3 test, we believe that's showing more of what there is for total in the soil. The problem with manganese is once you get to a soil pH above about a 6.5, we start really seeing manganese levels drop off. And this is verified by a lot of research work that's been done for many, many years. Manganese is just flat out less available to plants in higher soil pHs. So what we're saying here is if you're running a Malik 3 test and you've got a 7.5 pH, you may be completely misled on how much manganese is available to your plant. You can verify this by doing some plant tissue analysis work on your farm. The other thing that can really throw things off is lime applications. If you've got a low soil pH and you're trying to raise it, chances are you're putting some lime out there. Well, when you're putting a huge volume of calcium out in an application, it's going to tie some things up. And one of the things that it can hold back is manganese. So if you're in those situations where you do need to correct a low pH, and you say, hey, Brian, I, I'm at a five right now. I got a ways to go to get to that even 6.5 like you talked about. That may be one thing to think about, but as you're doing that, make sure you're supplying some manganese to your plants. And if you don't think that's such a big deal, again, take the plant tissue analysis and let the plants tell you what they need. Let me just tell you about something from our own farm. Where we've had higher pHs, we've found that we do have less manganese availability, even when we've gone out and spread a whole bunch of manganese. That's a real problem. So what we've tried to do to counteract that is just use some manganese chelate at planting time, maybe a quart or two, in furrow or two by two, something like that, and also doing some foliar feeding of manganese. Well, we haven't always been doing that, Brian. In fact, there's one field I was walking past uh, with Neil Kinsey, who's well-renowned around the world about uh, his expertise in soil fertility. And we were looking at some corn plants, and they're pretty small. And Neil said, wow, looks like you're really short in manganese out here. And I thought, I don't see any deficiency symptoms on the leaves. How can that be? And Neil said, no, I don't see any deficiency symptoms either. I just see very uneven emergence looking up the rows. And that's one nutrient that plays a part in getting an even emergence in your field is having plentiful manganese. Well, manganese is important for many different functions in the plant. We're not going to go all through that today. We just want you to understand, hey, this particular micronutrient is something that a lot of people are talking about with Roundup and, oh, it's getting tied up and everything else. We are absolutely not seeing that. But what we are seeing is it's getting tied up in high soil pHs, and we're finding a lot of people just flat out have not been applying manganese, yet if you pull up the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app and you look at your crops you've raised for the last 20 years and look at how many pounds of manganese you've been pulling off, and then you ask yourself, okay, I've pulled off all these pounds, how many have I put back? It's no wonder we're seeing manganese deficiencies out there. So we would just encourage you, address this on your farm. Well, one other thing to address on your farm is weed control. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? 